Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another social hub session. We've got, uh, we've got a mystery guest there already joining us as well. Um, yeah, welcome, everybody. We're really excited this morning to have more guests with us um, at the social hub. We've got the award winning team from WeWalk who are here to present their smart cane and app with us. Um, so we're very excited to have you and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll do some more formal introductions in, in a few minutes time. Um, but before we do that, um, we'd just like to welcome everybody back. Um, any of our regular social hub attendees or anybody that's new, um, it's great to have you here. We're, we're thrilled that this session has um, attracted so much attention. Um, I don't think me and Stuart can really take much credit for that. Um, I think most of the credit has to go to, to, to the guys from WeWalk. But still, um, we'll take a little bit, won't we, Stuart? <laughs> Good. It has to be said as well. Stuart is, 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 is battling with us today. He's a real soldier. Stuart's actually just had his vaccine. So he's actually not, he's not, you're not very well, eh, Stuart? But you, I've had you, my, you... yeah, I took, uh, I had got my first COVID vaccine yesterday and I've reacted really badly to it. So if, if I need to pop yeah. off or anything, don't be offended. I might just have to go and sit down a wee while. <laughs> That's serious, serious dedication though, Stuart. We, we, we really appreciate that. He's dragged himself here. Um, so yeah, it's good to have you. And also, um, anybody that, 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 that is, is new as well, um, I'd like to introduce my colleague Fanula um, from Sight and Sound over in Ireland as well. Nice to have you here, Fanula. Morning, everybody. So yeah, so we, we've got, we've got uh, Sight and Sound over in Ireland, as well as uh, I'm over here in East Yorkshire, the east coast of England. We've got Stuart up in, in Fife in Scotland. And then we've got the guys from WeWalk, who are London and Istanbul. So we've got Turkey and we've got London as well. So it's, um, yeah, it's great to have you here. So everybody that's just arrived, welcome. Welcome to another session of the Assistive Technology Social Hub with Sight and Sound Technology and Seascape. It's, uh, it's great to have you here. We've still got a few people coming through the doors. Um, so we'll wait a couple of moments before we before we kick off. We've got 125 people uh, in the room so far. We've had over 220 people register for this session. So a, m a major amount of, of interest, but it's, um, yeah, re really, really exciting. Good. So Stuart, apart from the, uh, obviously the COVID vaccine, um, how have you been? How is it up in Fife? Yeah, it's not been um, too bad. You know, I had a, a nice break. Uh, I was on holiday last week and then, you know, got back into the, the, the swing of things uh, again on, on Monday. Weather's been OK, so I've been out with my guide dog quite a bit. And then just, as I say, just yesterday, the, the COVID vaccine just um, yeah. has destroyed me at the moment. Hit, hit you for six. Oh, terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. rough. Um, but... Some good news, I suppose, this week. The end is in sight. We can yeah. see we can see the end of lockdown, which is good. How about you, Fanula? You're, you're Dublin-based, aren't you? Sorry, I was trying to unmute myself there. Um, yeah, Kildare, just outside Dublin. So, uh, right. worse, I have some of the kids gone back to school here this week, which is great. Um, and there's a plan for when the rest of them return. So, I suppose, like you guys, we're, we're looking ahead and hoping... Right. For the best, April is going to be a bit more relaxed, hopefully. Yeah, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Yeah, Fanula is, is another soldier, a soldier of a different kind, Homes, homeschooling four kids. <laughs> that, is, that is, you know, you deserve a medal for sure, um, as, as well as doing lots of work for Sight and Sound. So. Um, great. Okay, guys. Well, we are pushed for time um, because the WeWalk team have a uh, very strict one hour today. They're very busy. So we will kick off. Um, again, welcome. If anybody's just joined, um, thanks for joining us for another social obsession. We've got the team from WeWalk with us. We're very, very excited. Um, and they're going to be demonstrating the, the WeWalk smart cane and app for us. Okay. We've got Jean-Marc Vigali with us, who is the research and development lead for WeWalk, who's based in London. And then we've got Joe Alfonso, who is one of the community managers, and uh, Joe's based in Istanbul, in Turkey. It's great to have you both here. Welcome. Thank you Good. for the lovely introduction, Sam. Uh, we want to thank you for uh, having us on your podcast. 
And we also feel very fortunate to be able to share our passion and our work with the rest of the community out there. Um, as Sam mentioned, my name is Joe and I'm the community manager for WeWalk. So I work very closely with our users to make sure that the adaptation process when they receive their WeWalk is a seamless one. And I also listen to our community feedback to see if there's any enhancement opportunities that we can do in order to make WeWalk a better product for everyone. And I'll, I'll pass it all over to John Mark so that he can introduce himself as well. Yep, thank you very much for that, Joe, and really is fantastic to be here. So I'm Jean-Marc, and we walk set of research and development. I basically make sure everything we do meets the requirements of our visually impaired community. Um, I'm visually impaired myself with Libra's congenital amaurosis, uh, so essentially night blindness and lack of peripheral vision. So very much so use the products that we make, um, along with the rest of our team, where we also do have a lot of lived experience in visual impairment. Um, so yeah, again, really fantastic to be here. Thanks again to the Sight and Sound team, and let's just dive into it basically. Uh, the format for this presentation will be, I'll run through sort of what we do, our company mission, you know, all the background stuff. But then what's gonna be really exciting is Joe will kick in. Um, he's actually got a WeWalk with him and we'll show you how it works. We'll show you what you can get and what you can do. And just as a heads up, before we even dive in, our WeWalk app is free to download. You know, we consider it a public service for our visually impaired community. So if you do wanna download the app right now in preparation for our walkthrough, which is gonna come up later in the um, presentation, then please do so now. Um, it's just type in WeWalk into your app store, Google Play, iOS, whatever. Both are fine. And we'll also give you a chance to do that later on. Um, but yeah, let's kick it straight in. So as I mentioned, I'm visually impaired myself. We have team members that are also visually impaired. And so we use the tools that we create. We use the long white cane. We think the long white cane is an amazing device. Don't get us wrong. You know, It really is a symbol of our independence. The only thing is we kind of, we've realized that, hey, you know, it's a great tool for what it does, but it just hasn't evolved. You know, we've come to a world where we talk about autonomous vehicles, but yet the stick just doesn't do anything more than ground level obstacle detection. And so we've set ourselves a ambitious company mission, have you, which is that we want to empower our visually impaired community with cutting edge technology to give us this equal participation in society, you know, built by the community for the community. And the way we do that is through WeWalk. It's actually a really, really simple device. We have taken a standard cane um, and we've actually chopped off the handle of the cane. And as you can see in the upcoming video, um, you use it as you would a completely standard cane. Uh, you'd use constant contact, two point touch, you'd grip it as you typically would grip a normal cane, except now you have easier access to technology. So at the very front, you've got an ultrasonic sensor, which gives you upper body obstacle detection for low hanging tree branches, signposts, you know, things which your bottom of your cane will typically miss. But what's cool is that it actually connects to your WeWalk smartphone app and you can control the app using the built-in touchpad, speaker, and microphones. So you can use touchpad gestures to swipe between our navigation, exploration, and public transit features. And because it's a connected device, WeWalk just keeps getting better and better. It's an open platform. We keep releasing new updates and adding new features to your controller, essentially, to your WeWalk. And the app itself is completely accessible. You know, it's got loads of integrations. We've even integrated with Uber, but its interface was designed from the ground up to be compatible for both low vision users as well as users with no residual sight. So our low vision interface has customizable text sizes. It's got low vision mapping. It's got color filters. And the navigational aspect has a whole load of customizable settings, including how often you're reminded of your next turn-by-turn -turn guidance or whether you'd like to use cardinal or clock directions. And when you pair the WeWalk with your WeWalk smartphone app, the navigation experience is enhanced even further because we use WeWalk's built-in compass. So with WeWalk's built-in compass, you're always facing the right way and you always know which clock direction to head in. We also have public transit integration with over 1,500 cities. The entirety of the UK is covered. So you will get information as to the bus arriving at your bus stop, the train arriving at your train station. And you also, when on the train or when on the bus, can actually get an idea of when to get off that train or bus because we have a stop tracking feature. So we will tell you one stop before your destination when to get off. We've also released the first of its kind multimodal navigation app for visually impaired people where you can do a public transit or walking journey straight from one place. Uh, so you can get walking directions, you can get which bus to take, and WeWalk will guide you through the entire navigational process step by step. And the entire experience, as I previously mentioned, is controlled in whatever way you want to control it. You can talk to WeWalk, WeWalk can talk to you, or you can just use touchpad gestures if 
well, we just don't want to talk. And you can use gestures to jump between different settings between exploration and navigation, which Joe will now kick into. And the idea behind all of this is that we want to make WeWalk a personal hub. You know, we want to make WeWalk the de facto cane. So every cane user just has a WeWalk attached to it. Why not, right? It's a device which you use every day. That'll wake up in the morning, grab your cane. It'll take you to your bus stop. It'll take you to your place of employment. And it's just there. And to do this, we've made some amazing partnerships. So we've been working with Microsoft since February of 2019. And in 2020, we joined their AI for Accessibility program. And now in a future app update, We'll be using WeWalk's built-in sensors to help you track your mobility. So you can find out how fast you're walking, your cane angle, how many times you swipe your cane, what technique you use. So you can use it to improve your long-term mobility, even posture if you'd like. So a very, very cool update, almost making the Fitbit for visually impaired people if you'd like, built into your cane. Another amazing collaboration is with Imperial College London and the Royal National Institute for Blind People. This is a government-backed project, and we're building an indoor navigation system for WeWalk. So right now, WeWalk does a lot of great stuff outdoors, but when we go indoors, you know, that's always been a challenge for visually impaired people. And so this 18-month project will have us, you know, completing an indoor system that can guide you through train stations or malls or retail centers or what have you. And yeah, we're, we're hard at work. Uh, we're about a quarter of the way through the project. And this just sort of shows you that we're not just making a cane here, but we really are making a movement for better navigation for our community. And WeWalk isn't our first project. We've been working on assistive tech for quite a while now, for over 10 years. We started out working with visually impaired schools where we found that, hey, there's so much more we could do here. And there's so much help we can provide with technology. And so we came up with an application called My Dream Companion, uh, which reached over 150,000 visually impaired people and had talking newspapers, uh, audio description in movie theaters, as well as the first version of our indoor navigation system with beacons. And we realized, okay, this is really, really cool, but it's just not enough. We need to build a hardware solution that builds on top of all the software expertise. And that's how the idea behind WeWalk came about. We said, hey, we said, let's build it into a device that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. And then in May of 2019, following a lot of R&D, um, we launched WeWalk into the market. And yep, you, you can grab yourself a WeWalk right now. The app is out there. The cane is out there. And you can join the experience. And along the way, we've been quite fortunate and quite humbled to get a few awards. Um, we've received a Time Best Invention of 2019, which was really, really cool. Um, it definitely made our year. Um, in Japan, we received a Plug and Play Award, and then an Edison Gold Award and an honorable mention by Fast Company. But for us as an organization, whilst it's amazing to win awards, we do want to cast a new light onto visual impairment, you know, something which isn't typically talked about in the media. And so along with our partners, we've been very, very fortunate to be on quite a few media sources, including CNN, Bloomberg, Forbes. It's been so great to have this light shed on visual impairment. And actually, more recently, a more UK-related piece, we were featured on The Times, which was really, really cool. So uh, without further ado, I am now going to hand off to Joe. Um, again, thank you very much for sticking with us for this beginning part of the presentation. We're now gonna kick in and actually show you exactly how a WeWalk works, what you get in the box and take it from there. And here's a link to download the app. Um, if you do have low vision or would you like to scan that QR code, please go ahead. And if you just like to search in your app store, it's just simply WeWalk on the iOS or Google Play Store and you'll be good to go for our walkthrough. I'll give everyone just a minute to do that. In the meantime, we can stop sharing. Thank you, Jean Marc. Actually, um, just before Joe, you you um, shows the, the the presentation. Um, sorry, I should have mentioned this at the beginning of the session, but obviously got carried away uh, in the moment. But everybody, um, all of the attendees this morning, please do um, ask Jean Marc and Joe any questions or just share your um, comments, observations, your experiences as a cane user or as a you know somebody that works with. Um, you know, as somebody that is a cane user, please do share any of your uh, comments and questions in the chat box, okay? Um, which you can access by using Alt and H on a Windows uh, key keyboard or Command and H. Um, and there will be time towards the end if anybody actually wants to voice any questions as well. Um, so you can raise your virtual hand um, by using Alt and Y or Command and Y, or you can actually physically just click the button in the participants section. Sorry, uh, Joe and Joe Mark, I just wanted to make sure that everybody was aware of the, um, the feature. So thank you. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to the demonstration. Thanks, Joe. Not a problem. Thanks, Sam. So let's go right into it. Um, a lot of you are probably wondering, well, what do I get in the box when I get a WeWalk? 
So let's go through the different things that you would get when you first open a WeWalk. First things first, we've partnered with Ambutech for this foldable graphite cane. And the foldable cane does come pre-assembled when you get it. So as soon as you get your WeWalk, all you'll have to do is unfold it and then it's pretty much ready to go. Uh, this metal tip right here is what we call the adapter screw. And this hooks on to the WeWalk device. And it's as simple as placing it onto the WeWalk smart handle and then screwing it in. I won't do it at the moment just because for demo purposes, it's gonna be a lot easier if it's unscrewed. Um, there's also a roller tip that comes with it. This is also an Ambutech branded roller tip. And if you don't want to use the roller tip, you can also purchase an alternate tip directly from uh, the Ambutech website. Or if you have a tip that you wanna use that's the hook on style, you can use that as well. So along with the smart handle, you also get a couple of additional accessories with it. You also get a waterproof leather case that you can place on the smart handle. So if you're out and about and it starts raining outside, you wanna prevent your WeWalk from getting damaged. The WeWalk is not waterproof. However, if it starts raining, you can slip the leather case on it and you can continue using it as a standard cane. In the box, you'll also be supplied a micro USB to USB charger, which you can use to charge the WeWalk. The WeWalk has an average battery life of about 20 hours. However, we typically notice that it lasts a little bit longer. It really depends on how often you use it. It's one of those devices that you can uh, leave on overnight and you'll probably still have a charge when you wake up in the morning because it has a smart sleep feature, which means when it's not being used, it just goes to sleep until the user is ready to use it again. And then we can also promote the wrist strap. So you don't want to wear the wrist strap when you're walking about. It's just not uh, standard practice just for safety purposes. However, the wrist strap is very useful if you need to keep the cane in folded position. So what our tip uh, users typically do is they'll take the wrist strap and they'll tie a second loop around it. And then when it's in the folded position, because there is a little bit of elastic give to it, you can wrap it around the foldable cane when it's not being used. So that's what's included in the box. And if you have any questions about it, please feel free to share it with Sam and we can certainly answer any questions uh, regarding the hardware that comes with the WeWalk device. And let me go to the smart handle and go over the different components of it. If we were to start at the top of the cane, and whenever I say the top of the cane, I'm talking about the widest part of the cane, um, we have the LED light. So the LED light is very useful if you want to be seen in low lit conditions, or if maybe you're a low vision user and need some additional assistance in being able to locate your WeWalk device. It's very handy for those cases. And you can enable the LED light by using some touch gestures, or you can do it directly from the voice menu, which we'll get into a little bit later on. And we also have the ultrasonic sensor right here, and this is what allows your obstacle detection feature to work. And again, as John Mark had mentioned earlier, it detects anything above chest level. So any ground level obstacles, you still do need standard cane technique in order to be able to detect them. And if we move down the cane towards the narrow portion of it, this square indented area is your touchpad, and that's what allows you to be able to control your WeWalk hands-free using the voice menu. And right below that are two braille buttons. Now these braille buttons, they don't actually do anything, but they are very important in letting you know where you need to place your hand when you're holding the WeWalk cane. And you can hold the WeWalk cane in either pencil grip position with your index finger in between those two braille buttons so that you have easy access to the touchpad or you can use standard grip with your thumb in between those two braille buttons and your four fingers wrapped around the rubbery textured portion of the WeWalk smart cane. Now, towards the bottom at the tip of the smart cane is your charging port to be able to charge the WeWalk when it runs out of battery. And underneath the cane, you have the microphone, and this allows you to be able to use the voice assistant, which as a reminder is in, is in its beta stages at the moment. However, we are looking to expand that in the future. And if we move towards the wide part of the cane underneath it, we have the speakers. So whenever you pair your WeWalk smart cane with the WeWalk app, 
all the audio will come out through the WeWalk Kane speakers. Now you can use a wired or Bluetooth headset with the device. And if you have a Bluetooth headset, all you would do is pair your Bluetooth headset like you normally would. And then what happens is WeWalk recognizes that a headset is being used and all the audio comes out of your headset. And this little gray rubbery button right here is your power button and that's what allows your WeWalk to power on or off. So that covers the hardware itself. In case you're wondering what the weight is for the WeWalk smart handle, it weighs about half a pound. And there's about a hundred gram difference between using a WeWalk smart cane and a standard cane. So um, if it feels heavy at first, just remember that there is an adaptation period. And what our users find is once they've had a chance to really use the cane and get familiarized with the weight, uh, the weight doesn't even become noticeable at that point. So let's move on to the app portion of the WeWalk cane. Uh, as John Mark mentioned earlier, there's exploration mode and the exploration mode is great for being able to discover places around you. So if you all have the app downloaded right now, if you hover with voiceover, you'll notice that exploration mode is one of the first options that you'll hear. And if you were to enable that switch, what it does is it scans the area for any points of interest or popular places around you. And then through audio notifications, it will let you know its clock direction relative to where you're standing, the destination's name, and its distance. So for example, if I have a McDonald's to my right, it would announce McDonald's three o'clock, uh, 50 feet away. And you can enable or disable that using the uh, exploration mode switch. Now, another key feature of the WeWalk app is the transport feature. And this is what allows you to be able to monitor public transit around you. As John Mark mentioned, we have this available in most major cities. And if you were to access the transport feature, what you'll be able to do is view all the public transport stops. And then if you were to drill down even further in the transport, and if you were to select one of those stops, if it's available in your area, you'll be greeted with another set of options. And the next set of options will allow you to either check the times the arrival times for the public transit option, you'll be able to go there. And if you were to tap the go there button, WeWalk would start navigating towards that public transit stop. You can go there with Uber as well, or you can save that location. So if it's a public transit stop that you go to very often, you can save that. And anytime you save a location in the WeWalk app, what happens is that saved location shows up under your My Places. So the screen that you're going to be accessing the most often is the my plate, I'm sorry, the home screen in the WeWalk app, because that really is what has many of the core features of the app. You can also share the location. So for example, let's say you're out and about and you're at your public transport stop and you wanna notify someone that you're at this particular location. There's a share location button as well. And what that does is it generates a unique link that you can either email, WhatsApp, text message, you can send it however you'd like. And then they, the recipient gets that unique link. And when they tap on that link, if they have the WeWalk app downloaded, they'll be, they'll be able to know your exact location as well. And the last item is the navigate feature. So the navigate feature allows you to be able to navigate to different uh, destinations around you. So you can either plug in the address or if you'd like, you can search for a particular point of interest. So for example, if I wanna search for uh, Starbucks, for example, I can type Starbucks and it starts searching for the Starbucks around me. And then when I select that particular uh, destination, it'll start its navigation and we've created a customized uh, navigation experience to make it low vision friendly and uh, as uh, seamless as possible using a combination of low vision mapping as John Mark had mentioned earlier. So if you were to start the navigation, one of the options that you'll have there is a low vision map option. There's also a percent completion available in the navigation option. So what happens is as you move closer to your destination, the percent completion goes from 0% and then it starts counting up until it reaches 100% so that you know at any point where you are in the journey. And you also get the step-by-step -step directions. 
So what happens is as you're moving closer to your destination, if you need to take a right on a certain street, you'll be notified with an audio notification. So you'll hear, take right at First Street. And at that point, you'll know you need to take a right. Now, if you happen to miss that uh, right at First Street, you can keep going straight. And what it will do is it will refresh the location and then you'll uh, be taking another route. Now, let's say you didn't want to uh, input the Starbucks. Let's say you're just uh, in an unfamiliar location and you wanna be able to search the points of interest around you. And ex the exploration mode feature also allows you to be able to find places around you. So if you were to tap the explore option, it's very similar to what I covered earlier. However, this has all the points of interest sorted by category. So under here, you'll find things like arts and entertainment, uh, food and cafes. And if you were to select any one of those options, what it would do is it would list all the points of interest for that particular category. So if you selected food and cafe, it would select or it would show all the restaurants and cafes around you. And if you were to select any of those, you're going to be greeted with the same options that we had earlier for the transport options, which is being able to go there, take an Uber there. Um, if there is a phone number listed for that point of interest, there is going to be a phone number available as well. And I should mention that the phone number isn't available for all the points of interest, only because we pull this data from Foursquare. So if they don't have that data available in there, then sometimes you won't have the phone number listed. And similar to before, you'll be able to save that location as well in case it's an establishment that you go to pretty often. So I've covered the main aspects of the WeWalk app as well as the hardware. And I wanna make sure that we have uh, time for questions as well. And John Mark, if there's anything that you'd like to add as well, if maybe there's um, any information that you uh, would like to share as well. No, I'd like to, just like to say a massive thank you, Joe, for running everyone through the app. I hope that everyone at home now that has used the app has also gotten a taste for it. Uh, the thing is, it really is sort of an app which we'd recommend you going out there and using and seeing for yourself. There are so many combination of preferences that you could use when during navigation and during your exploration radius. So we just say go out there and try it when it's safe to do so, of course, um, when you're legally permitted to be able to just sort of, you know, go on long journeys. Um, but yeah, I really think that's it. I think we can dive into some questions now and um, please ask away. And just one more thing just to touch in. Uh, into Joe's previous point of the cane and battery life. From its very fundamental basis, and I know we keep on saying this, we really do want WeWalk and your standard cane technique to be your primary focus when mobilizing outdoors. You know, WeWalk is absolutely not a replacement for good orientation and mobility. It really is just a tool to help you get access to information just that little bit faster. We just want to caveat that because we would like to work with orientation and mobility trainers as well in terms of administering WeWalk as a standard K that just has a bit of extra features if you need them. And that's a good point. And one thing that we should also mention is that the WeWalk app can work standalone as well. However, you do get a lot of benefits by having the smart cane as well. Um, as we mentioned earlier, obstacle detection is one of the core benefits that you get by having the cane as well. And it detects up to 160 centimeters. And it's very useful, not just for obstacle detection, but for real life scenarios. Like for example, we've had users say that they use it for being able to detect, detect when it's safe to enter revolving doors. So what you can do is you can hold it in the upright position. And as the door is revolving, the ultrasonic sensor is detecting the door. So when it's vibrating, you'll feel that it's not ready for you to enter the revolving door as well. And then when it stops vibrating, you'll know at that point it's safe to go and enter the revolving door. It works for elevators as well. When the doors are closed, you'll be able to feel the vibration on the smart cane, thus letting you know that there's a, an obstacle in the way. And then when the doors open, you'll know it's safe to enter the elevator. And these obstacle detection settings can be adjusted. Um, as John and Mark mentioned, there's a lot of flexibility with the app as well as the smart cane. We want to make sure that users can customize it however to their liking. So for example, 
let's say you are walking around and you're using the exploration mode feature, it's just going off and announcing all the points of interest around you. You don't wanna hear places that are really far away from you. So what you can actually do is customize it under the preferences settings. So you can adjust the radius so that you're only hearing destinations that are close to you. Excellent. Well, thank you, uh, guys. I suppose we can pause there for a second and just sort of take stock. And uh, I know we've got quite a few questions queued. Um, but just first of all, just to thank you both. That was a fantastic presentation. Um, it's great to, to, you know, to get an insight and a background into how we walk, you know, uh, how life started. Um, and and then obviously to, to sort of uh, to, to go into Joe's presentation and to see the the visuals of, of the cane as well it's fantastic it really is um you know brilliant um, i'm fascinated as well i mean you've got some really impressive endorsements as well i mean the the we walk cv is very impressive um i mean we've got bbc cnn uh, forbes magazine uh, mashable the digital media platform um all endorsing this this, this device um you know, so it's it's obviously you know it's got a lot to live up to. It's got a lot to live up to, and I'm sure I'm sure it does. Um, but yeah, so my question actually, I'm quite interested, Stuart, to bring you in um, because obviously you're a guide dog user, Stuart. Um, so obviously, when 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 your guide dog eventually retires, um, is this something that you would consider consider using rather than getting another guide dog? Or would you... um... <clears throat> I mean, I, I love my guide dogs, so, you know, it might be used as a kind of companion piece, if you like, rather than, um, you know, a, a full-blown um, going out with. But again, what I'm thinking is that um, I use, a, when I need to use a long cane, I've just no motivation to do it. You know, a standard long cane, I have very, very little confidence with a standard cane, but if you're getting all this feedback um, from this wonderful sounding WeWalk cane, that actually might give me the motivation and the, the confidence to actually go out and about and actually use it more. It's, but, you know, so for example, if my guide dog takes ill, I just won't go out, to be honest, you know, with a normal cane. But if my guide dog is ill and I had one of these um, WeWalk canes, I think I might be more inclined to actually go out and and use it on public transport and roundabout, yeah. Mm. Yeah, definitely, definitely. No, it's, it's, it's interesting just to get your sort of insight on it. Um, good. Well, we do have we do have lots of questions queued up. So, Fanula, should we hand over to you? If I know you've been monitoring the chat box. Yep, I have indeed, Sam. And um, that was a really interesting presentation. Thanks a million. Yeah, a few questions I've just grouped um, together. Any that are kind of similar. So. We had a couple uh, just wanting confirmation, um, Joe, on um, sorry, on, on the fact that it, it it's not waterproof. So I think you said that you can you can slip the cover over it in the rain and it still works um, as a cane. But I let you explain that further. Yes, you're correct, Vanilla. It's not waterproof. However, we do provide a waterproof leather case that our users can use and it just slips right on the cane. It's got a very snug fit to it. It covers the ultrasonic sensor portion of the cane. However, it can be used as a standard white cane at that point. And if you're still navigating as well, don't forget your compass will still work perfectly fine. So you still get the added benefits of navigation, uh, but just that you won't be able to um, get that obstacle detection. Okay. Yeah. Um, somebody just pointing out that if somebody's searching for it in the in the app store, it's we walk without a gap, uh, a space between the words. Um, you answered this, uh, Joe, as, as we went through. Just as the person asked the question, actually, but it was about how much weight the we walk um, device adds to the cane. If you want to just go over that. Yes, it's about 100 grams heavier than a standard white cane. So the smart handle is about half a pound. So um, the weight difference is probably going to be a little bit noticeable, especially if you're coming from a standard white cane to a smart handle with, I'm sorry, a cane with a smart handle attached. However, we've done our best to be able to keep the weight down by providing a very light Ambutech uh, foldable white cane. Um, so there will be a difference. However, the adaptation period is usually quite quick 
once you get the smart handle and smart cane, and then once you've had a chance to be able to use it in real life use, uh, that weight stops becoming as noticeable at that point. Okay, thanks for that, Joe. A couple of questions regarding the cost. Yes, uh, the smart cane costs 599 US dollars. However, we also offer free international shipping. And if you were to purchase it right now, you would also get a free Bluetooth earpiece along with the WeWalk smart cane. And that cost covers everything that I just covered when I was unboxing it. So it also includes the Ambutech cane, which you can select in three different sizes. You can select in the 51 inch, 54 and 59 inch. So you'll be able to customize that as well. Joe, jo, sorry, sorry, Fanula, just to jump in there. Just regarding cost and, and you know, the app as well. Um, is there, there is no cost for the app. Okay, just to just to be clear, um, so you, if you don't have the cane, you can use the app with free of charge. There's no subscription. Is that right? Yeah. Absolutely. So yep. you can download the app for both iOS and Android devices, and there's no cost for the app. Fantastic. Okay, and in terms of sort of upda updates, is there any subscription packages or fees, or how how will that? Is there so, a platform for that as yet? So updates currently just come in um, as you would typically update uh, through your phone. So it's just a simple case of hitting update your app in your Play Store, and you'll get the latest features. Same with firmware. So WeWalk has a built-in microprocessor, so we'll have firmware updates to make it better. Once the firmware update comes, you just connect your WeWalk to your smartphone, and it's simple as just hitting the update button from within the app itself. So as of now, everything is free of charge. You know, we want to keep improving our platform together. One of the key things... Um, which all our users should know is that whenever a WeWalk is purchased, we don't sort of just go, well, okay, here's a WeWalk, go out into the wild. We actually run through an unlimited number of hours induction session with you. And you'd be on the phone to, to Joe or one of our customer team, or even sometimes to me. And we would actually talk through every aspect of your journey. We'd make sure you're set up and happy with your WeWalk. And often cases, when we first started out, we would see that, hey, wait a second, we can improve something here. You know, you're onto something. You didn't find that that great. Okay, let's, let's fix that. And so a lot of our early users actually had a big part in our development of our app. And we still do that. So that's why we've committed to this whole sort of update as you go experience because we want to just make sure our product is perfect um, you know, before we start charging for things, basically. Great. Thank you for, for confirming that. Thanks, Vanilla. Yeah, and that's great, Jean-Marc, because I think you've kind of answered a couple of questions that came up there. One was about feedback and people's experiences. Are people saying that their mobility has improved as a result? Um, and the other was in relation to a trial period. Um, so you've kind of touched on those, but you might answer them answer them directly if you can. Thanks. Yeah, sure. I'd be, I'd be happy to. So I'll try to put on my unbiased hat, or <laughs> my unbiased hat, but we can honestly say though, from the WeWalk perspective, obviously when we started out over a year and a half ago, we had a lot more product niggles than we have today. Uh, you know, we were still getting around our navigation interfaces, bug fixes and crashing. We were a small team back in the day. Um, but we've come a long way since then. I mean, there are still some sorts of outstanding things that we go, well, could we have done it better? For instance, you know, the handle size in an ideal world, we would make it even smaller, even lighter, but we've had to make compromises as to how much technology we can fit. But we've come to a point in the organization where I think I can confidently say that we have crammed in so much tech and so much good stuff into the cane, for instance, that it now becomes worth the ever so slight increase in, in weight and, and size and all that. Um, in terms of our general mobility, yep, uh, users now genuinely love the navigation system. I think we've learned a lot from our prior experience and how we display that. So we've moved to clock-based directions, for instance. We've changed a lot of WeWalk's touchpad gestures. We've improved the streamlineness of the voice menu. Um, so yeah, uh, most of users have said that, hey, WeWalk has had such a, a, a big change. And actually, we have one of our users here in the UK. I'm not sure if he'd be listening to this podcast, um, but he might be. But he actually came up and was like, hey, I'm actually using it. And we don't endorse this by any means, by the way. Please don't do this. But he'd taken off the shaft of his cane and was just using the WeWalk as a handle separately just for the obstacle detection because he was low vision. And so, you know, it made us quite happy to see, hey, users are willing to experiment. They're willing to see how WeWalk can work for them. And it's been really great. Yeah. 
Great, thanks for that, Jean Marc. There's a couple of questions kind of linked. Um, one is, do you guys need to ensure that people have long cane skills before they purchase the WeWalk? And are mobility officers um, in different countries teaching uh, with using the WeWalk? So, um, in terms of us checking if you have long cane skills, we, there's no way for us to do that. Like, we can't be like, hey, if you don't have long cane skills, no WeWalk for you. Like we, we do not do that by any means. It's just something which we strongly recommend because again, the whole basis for WeWalk really is good long cane technique. And that you know goes part and parcel with the idea of working with orientation and mobility officers. You know, O and M officers do an absolutely incredible job, you know, as someone that's experienced that as well, um, in, in terms of teaching you how to orientate and mobilize using your senses, using what's left of your site if you have residual sites, you know, it's such a key part of your mobility. And we walk really should just be a complementary device to that it's not a replacement by any means. Uh, but yes, we do work. Uh, we have some international partners, for instance, in the US. We work with organizations like the CNIB. Um, we have a partnership with them. Uh, places like the Lighthouse Guilds, you know, they are uh, our key partners. So what happens is they test WeWalk, they get orientation and mobility officers or their users to test the product. And once they're happy with the product, they're like, hey, um, yeah, let's let's try to make this work. Another sort of great organization that we're in discussion with is Vision Australia, for instance, uh, Basher Ibrahim, one of their sort of great O&M um, specialists over there. Yeah, he's taken WeWalks on, on treks with uh, other individuals. They've tested it out and, and they're quite happy. So it's onwards and upwards. Great. Um, you need a smartphone. This question here about whether you need a smartphone. You need a smartphone for all the additional features, but what about the the basic kind of we walk without the additional features so your obstacle detection will work perfectly fine without a smartphone but we do recommend you have a smartphone for the cane so that's that's something you know that, that's something which is so key for the product that i'd say if you don't have a smartphone you know maybe it's not worth getting a we walk but if you do have a smartphone that's really where the obstacle detection can be customized can be changed get that navigation that exploration the transit so the smart features really are what are what make we walk so special yeah, absolutely. And when you're using it out, out and about, do you need, is it Bluetooth or what, what do you need in terms of uh, Wi-Fi or connection? It's just Bluetooth. So, um, and a good data connection. So um, WeWalk just uses that. So it's connected to your phone. Uh, it pulls data from your phone's built-in GPS sensor and then merges it with WeWalk's compass data. Um, that's all you need. There's no Wi-Fi. It's just as long as you have a data connection and some um GPS signal, you'll be good to go. And we've designed WeWalk in a way with a new navigation system where even if you get to an area that's not mapped, say you're you're in a park, right? And okay, you've got positioning signal, which is crucial, but nothing else. Then our destination tracking feature, which gives you sort of an as the crow flies indication, will still help you get closer to your destination, even if the street itself isn't mapped. Okay, very topical question here. Does it help with social distancing? This is a funny question, actually. This is, uh, we actually once had a setting as well. I love this question. Okay. It does, yes, because we have a obstacle detection setting at max, which is well over two meters. So it's, it's about two and a half meters if you were to stand sort of uh, shoulder to shoulder. And we once thought, hey, let's actually call this the social distancing setting. So in, an, in a WeWalk app version, maybe five months ago now, Joe, four months ago, something like that, whenever you'd said we walk, we walk to max, it would just say max social distancing because we were intending it to be used as a device used for social distancing. We dropped that specific phrase because we just thought max would be enough as in people would just, it was a bit of a mouthful to go through every time. But yeah, we were thinking along those lines, especially at the beginning of the pandemic, you know, we were very much, and we still do recommend using WeWalk in queues, for instance, to be able to identify people in front of you. Yeah, so it could be used for that aspect. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the max uh, setting for the obstacle detection is at 160 centimeters, which is just a little over five feet. I believe it's around 5.25 feet. Um, so it can be used to a certain extent. However, you're not going to get that recommended social distance gap, which is the six feet. So um, it can be used for those purposes. However, just for liability purposes, we'll say don't rely on we walk to be the be all and all for social distance. Okay, thank you for that. Um, there's a couple of questions here around um, whether you use we walk with your own standard cane or it, does it come with its own with it with a cane and the handle. 
I'm looking at Joe. I'm like, shall, shall I take this one? Shall you take yes. this? It's, it's such an easy question that we keep getting yeah. asked. I was like, no, you go for it. <laughs> this one gets asked pretty often. So if you do have your own cane, and I'm going to turn off my background here for a moment so that I apologize. I just turned off my video. Um, you can use your cane. However, it really depends on whether or not your cane is compatible with the adapter screw that comes supplied with each of our WeWalk smart canes. So as I mentioned earlier, this little adapter, there's a circular part right here. And if that circular part matches your white cane, this is really what allows the uh, smart handle to be able to connect to the cane. So as long as your cane is compatible with our adapter, yes, it is interchangeable. Uh, we haven't tried this on, like uh, some people have mentioned, can I use it on my telescopic cane? Um, as long as that adapter fits, then it should be compatible for it. However, in order to make sure that it's fully compatible, we recommend using the cane that we supply with our WeWalk smart handle. Um, you can also order it directly from Ambutex site. You wanna make sure that you find something that's uh, compatible with the smart handle. But again, it really depends on this uh, adapter screw and whether or not it matches the circumference of it. Okay, and similar question then, do you offer canes in different lengths? Um, for people if, you know, presume they're based on their own height. Yes, we do. We offer them in three lengths, uh, 51, 54, and 59 inch lengths. Uh, we don't have anything outside of those three, however. We're looking to do more customization in the future. So things that we're starting to look into now is maybe we can offer other sizes as well, maybe other cane types, um, tips as well. But at the moment, we have one standard tip, which is the roller tip uh, with hook on tip, the hook on tip that attaches towards the bottom, but you could also use uh, whatever tip you'd prefer, as long as it's a hook-on style tip. Okay, that's great. Um, what is the expected life of the cane? So in terms of software, we're committed to keeping on pushing out our updates, as in we will only have one WeWalk app. There won't be like a WeWalk app, V1, V2, whatever. Um, so that's gonna, we're gonna keep on pushing that. We're committed to it. In terms of the actual cane itself, like the hardware, I mean, shafts, last as, as long as a regular shaft would. So if you're a very aggressive long cane user, if you tend to travel a lot off road, if you tend to sort of rely on your cane every day, then yep, your shaft will eventually break. The roller tip will wear out and you can change the roller tip. Or if you actually snap the shaft, you can change that out. Uh, I would say that the shaft will definitely, the WeWalk handle itself will definitely outlive the cane, if that makes sense. So, you know, you're meant to go through a bunch of shaft iterations before anything was to happen to your WeWalk device. That's why we've designed the WeWalk device to have a replaceable shaft, because we know that the shaft is a you know, consumable device in the end. Uh, but we definitely want it to be a multi-year device. It's not like you know, your WeWalk's gonna sort of stop working after a year. We want it to be um, yeah, a, a long-standing multi-year device. And the devices do come with a warranty as well. So it covers uh, any parts damage. It doesn't cover uh, accidental damage, but things like uh, if there's defects from the factory or if there's uh, things that uh, have affected its functionality, not caused by the user, non-liquid damage uh, type of uh, damage to the cane, we cover that as well. And we'll try to repair it. If we're unable to repair it at that point, we'll just swap it out completely free of charge. Great, thank you for that. But, um, uh, yes, Sam. Sorry to dive in again. Just, just um, as a as a sort of uh, segue, and we've got a couple of people who have been waiting patiently to actually voice their questions. So oh, can we just, can we just, is that all right? Yeah, just just for one second, we'll just jump to Marcia. I know you've been waiting patiently. You just need to unmute yourself, Marcia, if you'd still. Hi, Marcia. Uh, yes, um, I was wondering. Um, I'm from San Francisco, by the way. I am wondering Welcome. how good is the WeWalk with someone who happens to be in a wheelchair? Hmm. That's a very, very good question. We, we've been asked that actually once before, and it still gave me food for thought on every occasion. So we haven't, as an organization, sort of tested or endorsed just sort of use in a wheelchair. However, in principle, it should still work in terms of sort of the handle itself. So as I mentioned before with our previous user who actually tried the cane without, a, um, without the shaft, 
The obstacle detection still works. The reason why the shaft is important is that the obstacle detection sensor is angled. So the shaft allows you to make that perfect angle with the ground so that the obstacle detection actually points above your chest. It's very easy, for instance, if you've got your cane pointed directly downwards or directly upwards, that you might miss an obstacle directly in front of you. In terms of the touchpad and the compass, it's the same story. So the touchpad can be used in any orientation, obviously. The voice guidance, the, the voice feedback from Ewox built-in speaker, the microphone, all that can still be used. But the compass, again, will need to be pointing at a specific angle as used within the shaft to give you that forward-facing direction. So whilst the simple answer really is you could, but it's not something which we'd endorse because we just really haven't calibrated our sensors or the obstacle detection sensor to work outside its sort of limits, if that makes sense. Well, yeah, <laughs> because yeah. I can't stand for very long. Uh, mm -hmm having just ripped my hips to shreds after getting hit by a car. So that's mm. why I'm in a wheelchair pretty much. <laughs> mm, no, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's something which we definitely sh we should be looking at as an organization. And, you know, we've made a commitment, especially with low vision, for instance, where we just want to make sure that everyone can get accessibility. Again, it's the reason why we just make our app available. You know, it's like, if we can make it happen, if we can help people with it, th then let's try it. So I'd say maybe try out the app first in terms of the navigation. That'll definitely work. I mean, there's no hardware required. And hey, maybe, you know, if you really want to try out the WeWalk and see if it works for you, we can, we can try to make it happen. And if it doesn't, you know, we'll be sure to, to make sure everything's done right. Yeah, I'd like to, I'd like to try it, you know, I'd like to see just whether it would actually make it with, in that situation. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I did want to try it. Marsha, we do offer, excuse me, we do offer a 30 day trial period. So when you do receive it, and if it's not right for you, uh, let us know within 30 days and we're happy to uh, schedule a refund or a return. Um, but you are, uh, you have the full capability of being able to try it as well. And then if you have any questions or it's just not right for you, please feel free to contact us and we can make things right. And what about uh, technical support in the United States as far as you know, so that I can actually, you know, if I'm kind of like not sure how to put the thing together, which I'm kind of fumble fingers in that regard, who may I contact to walk through the putting that thing, you know, putting the adapter screw and all that kind of stuff on. The nice thing is the WeWalk Smart Cane comes pre-assembled. So when you do receive it, there's not really much assembly required. The part that will probably take a little bit of time will be figuring out how to get the Smart Cane installed onto the cane, but it's just a matter of threading it through and then just turning in a clockwise direction. Um, but as far as putting the screw adapter on, it's already pre-assembled and all you'll need to do is unfold the cane. Now to answer your question about technical support, uh, you can contact us through our uh, email address at info at WeWalk or we schedule one-on-one -on -one training with all of our cane users. And these cane trainings are 100% free. So you could contact us at any point and we do the sessions over Zoom. And the reason we do them over Zoom is because during the training sessions, we want the phone that you're using the WeWalk app on to be available. However, if you don't wanna do it over Zoom, you prefer a call, we can do that as well. But we're always available to make sure that the- Oh yeah, you know, I can usually get on the Zoom via my computer, which is what I usually do. Perfect. And okay. John. So, sorry, sorry, guys. I was, I was just going to jump, jump to our next question. We've got, we've got a lot of questions oh, to get in before that. we finish. No, no, no <laughs> problem. Thanks, Marsha. Thank you, Marsha. Thank you for your questions. Is there anyone else with their hand raised there, Sam, that I might have missed? We can, we can jump back to the, the chat you box. You want to go back? Chat box. Yes, yeah. it's. Popping the chat box is. Yeah, a lot going on. <laughs> okay, I just made a some a note of, of a few of the questions to get us through them. Um, Joe and John Mark, I know this was covered early on in the presentation, but it was it was quite at the beginning, so it's, the person might have missed it, and it was just about we walk um detecting obstacles at or above waist height. Yeah, yeah. So it, it does. So the point of the obstacle detection sensor is to be finding things sort of above your chest level. It'll do above your waist as well, but sort of towards that sort of waist area, you'd still be using your cane technique. So you're thinking of bollards, um, curbsides, walls. You'd still be using your cane for that. This is much more for low-hanging tree branches, signposts, you know, things that your swipe will typically miss. Okay. 
Okay, thanks for that. And what about traveling? So um, we're all longing for those days when we can travel again. If I um, am primarily using it in one country, will it transfer easily to another when I'm traveling? Oh, totally. So we walk is completely um, country agnostic. So wherever you're at, um, we walk will work there. Again, we're, we're pulling data from, we, we aren't, we don't, we haven't made our own public transit or maps data. We're just pulling data from providers. Um, so as Joe had mentioned, for instance, we use Foursquare for our um, destination info. We use Microsoft for their public transit. So those providers will have gone out, they would have done all the hard work of mapping local cities and towns. So you just have to turn on your WeWalk. It'll automatically detect where you are. If you hit navigate transport, it'll automatically pull out places that are nearby you in that region. Great. There's a few questions around battery life of the device, um, how it is charged, and does it drain the battery on your phone when you're using it? Maybe I can kick into this and Joe, feel free to sort of come in because I know you mentioned battery previously. Uh, so WeWalk really is a variable device. You know, we say 20 hours of use typically, but again, it completely depends on how you use it. So if you're just a low vision user with night blindness, you just use it at night, WeWalk can easily last you for quite a few weeks. Um, if you are a heavy user that likes exploring, you've got the sensors built into it, touchpad on everything, just turned on full power, you know, maybe it'll last you several days, perhaps a week if you're pushing it. Uh, but it's not a sort of charge every night device by any means, as in you should be able to use it for a while. And again, the reason why we say your OM should be key is on the rare circumstance where sort of you've used your WeWalk a lot and it just runs out of battery, you still have what we've always had, which is just a standard cane. In terms of draining the battery on your phone, uh, we've made efforts to obviously not drain your battery, but naturally having Bluetooth turned on versus Bluetooth turned off will drain some additional battery. However, the drain isn't huge. So it's not like WeWalk is constantly pulling data from your phone. It's just a Bluetooth low energy connection. So, you know, if you're doing say GPS navigation with WeWalk, it should drain just as much battery as any other app, if not a tiny bit more, just because you have Bluetooth turned on. Yeah, and as John Mark had mentioned, um, battery from your phone is probably not going, you're not gonna notice anything noticeable in terms of uh, significant drain um, and, after speaking with users, that's usually something that I don't hear very often is that the battery life is not good on the WeWalk uh, device itself. It, it can last really depending on how long you end up using it for. So. Okay, that's great. Thanks. And it's charged um, with a USB-C uh, thing. I don't even know how, how to describe that. <laughs> But somebody oh, wondering, somebody wondering if uh, micro USB would not be more robust. It actually is uh, using a micro USB. So it uses a micro USB to USB uh, charger. And then what you do is you can either use a laptop or you can use a five volt adapter, which usually comes with a lot of uh, smartphones. Okay, perfect. Thanks for that. Um, there's a question here about using WeWalk with a guide dog and whether you've had any experience of users doing that and how it, how it works. Is it effective? Can we yeah, double, can double up this question, Joe? Sorry. To add to, add to that as well, uh, we've had somebody asking about, do you offer uh, training for mobility officers as well? Uh, yeah, I can jump in with the train trainer program. So we, we do indeed. Uh, work with and we have done sort of train the trainer programs where we showcase we walk to mobility trainers and the organizations behind them and we run in-depth induction sessions so here is exactly how you use we walk and we make sure that the trainer is actually 100 satisfied with the product and obviously we have longer test periods for organizations and trainers as well um so yes the simple answer to that really is yes in terms of guide dogs, I can kick in here, Joe, um, from my experience with our UK users. So um, as Stuart had kind of mentioned before, um, a lot of guide dog users love their guide dogs and rightly so. I mean, it's a guide dog. How can you not love your guide dog? Um, and it fulfills a very different purpose to WeWalk. You know, a guide dog is very different to a cane. It's for people with very different abilities. Uh, but again, WeWalk for us, you know, um, our previous user that actually had um, switched out his, the taken off the shaft, he was a guide dog user. And his guide dog was retiring. So he was in a position where, you know, he couldn't get another guide dog, but just wanted something better than a cane. And it did fulfill his purpose. Like genuinely, his feedback has been really, really positive. If you are a guide dog user and you want to have WeWalk as a sort of a side cane, you know, something to use if you, for some reason, 
don't leave the house with your guide dog, which again, why would you? It's like leaving your house without a cane. Um, then yeah, it, it should, you know, it's definitely better than a standard cane, if that makes sense. Yes, I mean, you, you obviously wouldn't use the, the guide dog and the cane and oh, yeah, for sure. that totally defeats the, you know, as you say, John Mark, they're very different. But I'm just wondering, say I was out walking with my guide dog, you know, I've got I've got Ron on, on the left hand side. If that cane was folded up, you know, just and I, I had the wrist strap on it, would I still hear, you know, navigation instructions and things from the cane? Could it be used that yeah. way? Yeah, you could. And we were thinking, I mean, we were thinking of getting some sort of attachment for we walk to attach onto a guide dog harness. So you can actually still use the touchpad and the obstacle detection. Because, hey, if you can use obstacle detection whilst using your guide dog, that's definitely something which a guide dog can do in terms of low-hanging obstacles. So there, there is a case for it. And we're investigating how can we get WeWalk attached to, because you're right, you know, you don't want to be walking around with a guide dog and a cane on the ground. That's dangerous and clunky at the same time, you know, being sort of walking with your dog and also trying to navigate your cane. Um, just, it won't work. So, um yeah, I mean, you could definitely do that. Um, a good starting point would be the app again, I'd say. So just downloading the app and trying it out whilst navigating with your guide dog. That's already like 50% of the WeWalk guide dog experience. And then we can find a way. I mean, I'm, I'm still working with our team to sort of investigate different attachment methods. You know, for instance, we're looking at symbol canes. How can we get a WeWalk onto a symbol cane without compromising obstacle detection? Great, guys. I know that um, you have to shoot. Yeah. yeah. Because we're 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 now hit eleven eleven oh one. Um, so anybody who has asked a question, I'm I'm so sorry that we we may not if we've not got round to you. Um, I know there's a couple of people of that uh, hands raised as well. But um, John Mark and Joe, how can anybody get in touch with either you or with We Walk uh, to to ask any burning questions? Um, what's the best way of doing that? So to purchase a WeWalk, you can go directly to our website and you can purchase through our checkout page. Uh, we accept most major credit cards. We accept PayPal as well. If you have any other questions before purchase or if you have any suggestions, feedback, we love to hear from the visually impaired community. You can shoot us an email at info at wewalk.io and we can share that as well in the chat box so that you have our contact information. But again, we love hearing from our community. Our app and a lot of our technology is really shaped by the feedback from our users. So please download our app, try it out. It'll give you a good sense of what the smart cane can do. And then if you feel like the smart cane is for you after uh, speaking with us, after this podcast or after reviewing our website, uh, check us out on our website and uh, do let us know what you think of our smart cane. Brilliant. Thank you, Joe. And um, just so everybody knows, um, if anybody was only able to uh, join us for part of this session or they want their colleagues, friends, family to see this, it will be on YouTube uh, later today. Um, so please do go on the Sight and Sound Technology YouTube page and you'll be able to find this the recording of this session. Um, we're going to let you go, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate uh, you you're giving up some time and, and coming and sharing sharing. The technology with us it's fascinating and really exciting so thank you thank you for, thank having, you so much us. for having us yeah yeah at really the same did. time and this with the same <laughs> words exactly joe that was amazingly in sync which <laughs> oh, it took us two hours to rehearse that yeah. <laughs> we nailed there you go. it yeah yeah <laughs> excellent great so guys if you need to shoot uh, that's absolutely fine um for everybody else who's who's been with us thank you again um, if you want to come and join the social hub for our next session, we'll be back in two weeks' time on the 18th, Thursday the 18th. Sight and Sound Technology also have a webinar Wednesday event, which runs on every alternative week to the social hub. So that is on next Wednesday, the 11th, uh, the 10th, sorry, the 10th. And they will be joined by, um, or they will be looking at Brain in Hand, which is a personalized digital support system. Um, that comes in the form of a website and an app, um, brain in hand. So please do check that out. That's next Wednesday. But we'll be back in two weeks on the 18th. So come and join us. Um, good. Thank you, Fanula. Thank you, Stuart. No problem. It's been brilliant. Thanks a million, Sam. Great. All right, guys. You all take care, and we'll uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks again. <laughs>